was in Pickles Fishing the other day, talking shit with Mick, and in walks a jigging ninja. Now what's a jigging ninja? This guy, this guy's name is Simon Pender, and he works for one of the biggest distributors of tackle. Some of the products include gulp and pen. This guy lives for the buff, jigging gloves, and polyester shirts with cartoon fish on them. He's the ultimate jigging ninja. And Simon, who has a black belt in jigging, uh, feeling very confident, said he could outfish bait any day. Now, this came as a bit of a surprise to Mick and myself, as a bit of a meat fisherman, and so the challenge was born. It was gonna be bait versus jigs, head to head, same spot, same day. So in the blue flannelette, we have Mick, uh, owner of Pickles Fishing. He has the home ground advantage on the south coast off Eden. Eden is known as a place full of uh, alcoholics with a fishing problem. So catching fish is not a problem down here and Mick knows it as well as anyone. He brought along a freezer full of frozen dead stuff, squid, striped tuna, pilchards. Uh, he was gonna put together a serious cocktail on his triple rig. So each of the guys is gonna be paired up with someone from the captain's crew. Jack is a wannabe fishing ninja. He's already got some gloves. He's got a couple of buffs tucked, tucked away. And also he's been cruising around doing stories on people like Zane and Vic Levitt, learning all about these little catchy catchies. So I'm a little bit nervous, but, but I'm a meat fisherman from way back. Uh, I'm in the gumboots. I'm side by side with Mick. There's no buffs here, just, just killing stuff. Having a fishing rep on board, uh, naturally we asked him to bring some gear that would mysteriously get lost in the bilge of the shark cat. So we've arrived at the reef, we're in 87 metres uh, of water. We're off Green Cape. Um, Mick says there's snapper out here, so we have our Jigging Ninja. Buff on please, Jigging Ninja. Gloves. And in the gumboots we have Mick with the home, home ground advantage. So out here today we've got two different types of outfits, one overhead, one spin reel. We're just going to drop to the bottom, see which uh, gets there quicker. We've both got the same size sinkers, the same rigs. We'll just see what the drop test's like. Just hit the bottom. And spin reels yeah, hit the bottom at the same time. So there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference in this depth of water with uh, the drop time. What we're finding, move with the, the overhead reel, it's a lot easier to winch up from these depths. We're fishing 90 odd metres of water. so. I can really crank this with a, like a winch. The spin reel, you've got to work the outfit to get the fish up where I can just crank. On the spinning reel. Personally, I'd rather be on the overhead. So far today, and we won't get cocky just yet, but uh, the bait definitely seems to be showing the jigs up as proof with the two nice snapper we just landed. <sighs> <laughs> Your teammate. And see, the boys with the jigs are still playing around. I've just hit the bottom and I'm already onto another nice snapper. <laughs> oh, it's probably on the bottom for about 10 seconds. If that. I just flicked the drag up and I was on. So we're using an ocean assassin and a um, pen Fathom 25. So basically I can sit here and just winch. I don't have to work the rod as much. You don't wear out one arm like you do the other. This fish is starting to float, so it's getting a little bit easier to wind. The other thing is it makes it easier for us. We are fishing three hooks. Um, so we do get three chances before we've got to winch up compared to their one. <laughs> he's got another cash in his head where he's been attacked by something at some stage, but another nice snapper goes down to the bait. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, the jigs are awesome. awesome. <laughs> the, the jigs are starting to put bait on their lines. You can see with the, jig, with the jigging ninja, they need very soft hands. These hands are really important because when you catch a fish, you've got to put it on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. You've got, to, you've got to socialise the fish, so you really need to protect those hands for later on. Fishing for likes. 
<laughs> the, other, the other thing is when you catch a fish, you've got to bust out the grease. Once, once one of these boys hook up, there we go, Jack's on. So what's going to happen is Simon will get the grease out soon <laughs> and start lubing up. <laughs> start polishing. Then we catch the fish, then we hold the fish, then we go social. <laughs> what's the lube for? <laughs> the reels? Uh, <laughs> what do you got? What did you catch that on? A nanny guy on a little catchy catchy. How many days did it take you to prepare that bait? Mate, straight down. <laughs> Look at that, I didn't even know they got this big. Yeah. Right, so I'm using a, a Fathom 25N. The gear ratio on this is 5.5 to 1 on high speed, 2.8 to 1 on low speed, which gives me about a metre every turn. So every crank of the handle, I, I get it back about a metre of line. So I do prefer drum reels for what we're doing here, the overheads. I do like using them like a winch, but the downfall is you are only limited to up and down. You can't cast with these things like you can with the the um, egg beater. So if we have a school of kingies bust up, the spin boys are uh, able to get a shot at them where I'm restricted to still going up and down. I do like the short rod with the drum reel just as a, a nice winch. Oh, uh, this you can use for jigging kingies, um, fishing deep, snapper fishing in the shallows. It's a good multi-purpose little reel, but because we're running heavy sinkers um, and fishing the deeper water, it just makes it at the end of the day a lot easier on multiple drops than um, an egg beater where you've got to do a lot of pumping and winding. Might we'll have to change jigs in a minute, I think. we are um, got to play around a little bit and try and find the the secret recipe for today, it's a little bit tough with lack of current, but um, it's a little bit more involved and a bit more enjoyable I find than chucking down a hunk of meat and, and just dragging all the, the fish out of the ocean for kill it, fill it and chill it. <laughs> so here we got a bit of a storage case I've made up for me catchy catchies. So we got anywhere from a, a 40 gram head through to a 140 gram head. And then we also have bite bite rigs basically which have another weight on the top section uh, if I can get one untangled so that's the bite section basically has another weight which you feed your line through the top section comes out tie that on you got double assists in the skirt with a spring which we can then use that spring to push a gulp on wind it on there to add a bit of scent into it on these slower days and um, yeah, two, two Teflon coated owners in there, so nice and strong and sharp. And yeah, so the new Catchy Catchies, new for 2020 from Berkeley. Um, been doing really, really well with these in the deep water at times, but today not so, so good yet, but we'll keep plugging away and see what we can catch. This is a squid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is, a, this is a imitation of a squid. <laughs> so what we've got here, a bit of the baits we're using today, Solder pillies just so they stay on the hook a little bit better. But what we do do is when we thread one or two pillies on, we lock him on with a bit of squid. That way it doesn't fall off the hook, doesn't rip off the hook as easy. Bit of tuna fillet. We're not uh, cutting it into small chunks, we're just cutting it into reasonable size baits because there are some nice sized fish down there, even though these guys aren't uh, catching them on the jigs. The bait seems to be the right size for them. And then we've got the good old squid. These little ones I'll run whole, but some of these bigger ones we just cut in half and uh, run that as half a bait. So we are fishing a three hook rig. It is a fairly long rig. It's probably a metre in between hooks. And then a metre from the first hook to the sinker. The reason for that being is there's a lot of the small perch sitting on the bottom. We want to get that up a little bit higher and that gives us two or two, three metres of the water column we can fish with three hooks. And there's a pilchard and a, the squid just locking him into place. Oh, look at this, the jiggers are finding new ways to finally catch up. <laughs> Did anyone see that jig go down? No, I reckon, I think it's a I reckon they've been in the icebox because look, the fish aren't moving. 
Making sure they are. <laughs> so if you are thinking about being a jigging ninja, there's some important criteria. Fashion is critical. It's critical. The lariest shirt you can find. You can see the gloves with matching trim. The trim on the shirt, just that red and white, needs to flow into the buff as well. Um, disappointed the shirts haven't, and brand, a lot of branding as well is critical. Um, they're so embarrassed about their fishing, they have to cover their face. It's not actually protection from the sun. You can see Jack up there, he's a, he's a budding ninja. He's, it starts with gloves and then next minute buff and then full body protection. Gloves are a gateway drug to buffs. <laughs> do, do they have um, jigging onesies? <laughs> here we can see, here we can see at the front, here we can see at the front of the boat is the meat fisherman. He is a dying species because he's causing the planet to die by raping everything off the bottom of the ocean. This is the first flanny he's ever bought. He's only got one flanny. It's the Monday to Sunday flanny. Uh, another key ingredient, the fashion item on the meat fisherman is the waterproof shoes. It's not for water, that's for blood. <laughs> but all jokes aside, the bait fisherman is kicking ass. <laughs> Kids, don't be jigging ninjas, bait fishermen all the way. Jack's heading home now with his tail between his legs and his buff in his pocket all the way back to Sydney. Bye bye Jack.